Hi, welcome back to Outdoor Exploration. Um, this is our Friday garden update. And at the moment, I am dumping what was a full bucket of the, uh, the hay bedding from inside the chicken coop, including all their poop, um, all around my tomatoes. Specifically because for some reason this bed has a lot less growth happening than the bed in front. I don't know why, but I thought, well, I'll just give them a little more of the topping. And this has, obviously, the chicken poop is a good fertilizer, so we'll see if that helps them. They're not doing terribly, but they're just not as happy as those in the bed right next to them. So, um, you may not want to watch me do this. So I will just take off my awesome rose gloves that my mother gave me. Although, you know, they're called rose gloves, but they're also just, I think they're chemical gloves, but they're really, really poke proof. Right now I'm using them just because it's chicken poop, but they're, they're really awesome for uh, blackberries and roses. Um, anyway, let me take you down and see the, the progress of our latest chicken, not casualty, chicken who's having problems. So here you get to see our finally completed outer chicken run. Um, so the setup we have now is the coop in the house, which is vermin proof as long as we close their entry and exit door there. And uh, this smaller run, which goes straight up to the wall of our house and has panels over it to keep, you know, predators from above from coming in. Um, Although not our cat, she's found ways to get in. Luckily, she's too afraid of the chickens now to hurt them. But, uh, and uh, it's not mink or rat proof, but during the day it's safe. Um, as you can see, it now has a little isolation box in it, which I'll get to in a moment. And then there's this bigger run, um, which doesn't have much of a, a roof cover right now, just some wisteria, uh, not wisteria, clematis vines that we've put over it. Um, to deter birds from flying in, but this is a less safe run during the day uh, for use during the day and this is where the chickens are spending most of their time. So the handy thing about having two runs that can be both open or that we can isolate is that we can isolate injured or sick birds, which we have yet again. We seem to have the worst luck this year, but in here My husband has built, oh, oh, it's all right. Don't be scared. It's time to come jumping out. This is big one um, because it's the big one. It was always the biggest one. And uh, big one has what we think is an impacted crop. So uh, Marcus has built this um, little Kind of isolation coop for her just or her or him we don't actually know yet uh, to keep him safe during the night and uh, also to keep him from eating um, unfortunately uh, you may have seen in the last video that he was uh, featured in one of the clips doing this little thing with his mouth which he's not doing right now but he kind of opens his mouth and closes it oh there we go um, which is an effort to move food along through the crop. And that was a week ago and it's still not improved. So come sit with me outside and I will show you what we're doing to work on this. We're not sure if it will be successful yet. All right, come on lovely. Just a bit of chicken anatomy quickly because he's hungry here. Um, chickens don't have a stomach like we do. They have their trachea, not their trachea, sorry, their esophagus goes down to their crop, which is a little organ here. It's basically like a bag on what is to them the right side of their esophagus and neck. And uh, yeah, and that it's basically a holding 
tank or bag for whatever they eat, which then releases um, the food slowly into their gizzard, which is further down here, but inside obviously. And the gizzard has various little pebbles and things that they might have eaten um, over over their lifetimes, which worked as, work as a kind of grinder. So in the gizzard, the food gets ground up, and then it goes into what is a similar digestive system to ours. They have a uh, small and large intestine, and then it comes out their vent, which in a chicken, they only have one opening, so the poop is the same as the pee. I mean, it's all in, in one place. They don't really have a, a bladder like we do that's collecting from and sending it out into a... How do I say this? My God. They still have pee, but it doesn't go out the same way ours does. Um, and the eggs. So if it's a female, it will also have the eggs. If it's a male, it will have the penis. What's going on over here? Um, we're having a little, a little cat problem. Blackberry, go on. Go on out. 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 So what has happened to this one we call big one is that um, the food isn't moving from the crop further down um, and basically no just wait i can feel the crop it's a big sort of mandarin orange sized ball that is sometimes quite hard right now it's not as hard but um, at certain times i've been able to actually feel hay and things like that that she's eaten so this is why she's living in a little isolation box with no food available um, because it needs to move down. We have tried regurgitating her and it didn't work because it basically is too, too hard down there. So we're on to the last ditch effort right now, which is to feed her chicken smoothie, uh, which should work as a rehydration solution and some kind of nutrients. And hopefully, well, it has, it has been working to get past it all. Oh, here you go, here you go. Now she, in the beginning, or he, uh, wouldn't take this without a syringe, but slowly she learned to drink it. There you go. So what this is, pull your feet up. You, you look so miserable. Come on. Yeah, yeah, if, if you leave, if you leave, the smoothie's still here, so you need to drink it here. There you go. It's upsetting that there's a cat sitting here, I know. So what this is, is nuts and seeds and um, uh, some of her regular feed uh, mixed up like a smoothie and then strained so that basically there is nothing solid that can get stuck in this lump in her gizzard. And um, what am I forgetting? Oh, plus some maple syrup and baking soda and salt which will help her um, not get dehydrated or rather will keep her electrolytes up. We're all rather invested in this because this is possibly our favorite chicken. You're not supposed to have favorite children, but you can have favorite chickens. This is the one that has been um, looking after all the others, always aware of what's going on, breaking up fights, I, I'm pretty sure it's a rooster, uh, but we go back and forth with that, so um, it isn't any breed that we ordered, clearly, because it has this orange around its neck, so it could have some copper moran in it, we don't know, but it's just a lovely, lovely bird. Whether it's a rooster or a hen, we don't care. It's valuable in the flock because it's keeping the, well, it's managing everybody. So the reason for the electrolyte um, concern is because just as with humans, if chickens drink and drink and drink and aren't having any food going through, um, the water going straight through their systems actually can strip the salts from their body and they can, they can have all kinds of failures uh, because of that. So we don't want to have that. We know this is going through because she's having runny poops, so it's probably what's kept her alive for this week of not being able to digest her regular food. But uh, what we're doing is after she has some of this, 
then I can start to feel it in her crop. And then the ball of impacted food matter that's in there begins to be just floating in the smoothie that, that he, he or she has consumed. There you go. So what I do is I massage the crop and every time he eats, we manage to do this. We sort of break up what's in there with the smoothie that's also in there. It doesn't seem to bother him at all. He'll just sit here and, okay, I should, I spoke too soon. Well, you, you have to stand on my hand. Okay, no massaging for a moment. <laughs> yeah, you lovely. Well, no, that's too difficult for me. You gonna leave? That's a bad idea with the cat out here. Come here, come here. I know, you would much rather be with your friends. Uh, so if you look closely, this this lump here I, I hope hope you can see that beyond all these lovely feathers is uh, that's where the crop is it should not be that big the crop should maybe be plum sized when it's full um, this is a big bird but this crop is like a large mandarin and well now now that he's eaten this smoothie it's like a large mandarin maybe a small one earlier um, and I can actually feel hay or something like that that he's eaten in there. We're concerned it may be ferns. We left the ferns in and they do seem to be eating them and maybe that was a bad choice on our part. So I'm thinking we're going to have to dig that fern out of here and not allow them access to ferns. You think wild animals know, or not wild animals, but animals should know what is okay to eat and not, but I think Big One made a mistake. And we really want him to survive this. So as I'm massaging this, it feels like a, a lump of uh, like silly putty in there. I can mold it so now it's flat this way and then I can squish it this way. And yeah, it's not very comfortable, but I don't think it really hurts him. Some people actually have surgeries to remove impacted crop. They, they just, I mean a vet usually, but people do this at home too apparently, I'm not going to, will um, we'll cut right in through the, the front here and straight into the crop and just pull out whatever's in there. But um, we promised ourselves these chickens were not going to become exceedingly expensive pets because we can't afford that. Um, it's not what would happen in the wild. Amazingly, uh, chickens appear to be very, very close to their original wild ancestors, which are, oh, I've forgotten what they're called, something fowl, forest fowl, I think they're called. Um, and if you look at photos of forest fowl, they're all sorts of different colors. and. Uh, all the breeds that we know as farm chickens now are, are well, not all of them, but uh, many of the ones we, we recognize as the most common are actually still quite closely related to the forest fowl. We just need you to be cleverer and not eat all the grass and ferns. So we now have eight roosters living in the rooster, or what did I call it? The bachelor suite. <laughs> and uh, they're doing all right. Um, the most recent ones to be put in were, were bullied a little bit, but they seem to have found all their pecking order now. They're still trying to crow, not very successfully, much to our entertainment. They usually do it when they're in their houses, so it's, it's hard to show you, but uh, Tally did man manage to get a, a video of one. Well, an audio of one where you can see the outside of the house. So have a look at that. And the rest of them are um, still working out their pecking order. We don't have any huge issues with them. I've been checking all their crops since this happened with Big One. 
they seem quite happy. We don't know how everything will go, but that's them this week. They, they seem to have developed some little cliques, actually. Some of them only like to spend time with others, and if you put them with a group they're not usually with, they <laughs> it doesn't go very well. So, uh, yeah, it's an entertaining prospect watching our chickens grow. And sad, a little bit heartbreaking, especially with this one. We're really not sure that he'll make it, but we're hoping. And these many times a day smoothie feedings, they can't go on forever and ever and ever. It's been a week already. We're doing okay, but you know. Anyway, that's it for our mini farm update. Hi, my love. Hello. And I'll see you next week. Happy exploring. <laughs>